Hello everyone, Michelle here from the Creative Code. Thanks for joining me today. I've got a little bit of a different setup. I've been away for a little while, uh, quite a while actually, uh, busy with work and construction of the house. But today I had some time off and I thought I'd have some fun with paper and ink again. It's been a while and I really miss getting my hands dirty with this. So I thought I'd spend a little bit of time playing and experimenting. Um, if you hear some funny noises, it's the construction going on outside. It's forever ongoing at this point, and uh, we'll just have to ignore it. So, welcome to the Creative Cove. Uh, I thought we would play with some experimental watercolors and mushrooms today. Uh, I have done videos like this before. It's highly experimenta experimentative. Um, I really just wanted to have fun and play and take you along with me. So this is how I make these cute little mushroom postcard size drawings. So let's get started. Um, I am using a cold press watercolor paper, uh, pretty cheap paper. It's just a Carson uh, 120 pound and I don't even need tape straight here. Bear with me. I just uh, apply some tape and create these little frames to uh, play with. Uh, it's cheap tape. Unfortunately, I don't have good tape. I wish I did. Uh, uh, but you do want to go with a half decent watercolor paper. You want something absorbent. And we're going to play with inks today. So I have my Distressed Oxide Vintage Photo, uh, Walnut Stain, this pretty jade color. It's, it's a shimmering iridescent spray and uh, this distressed oxide hickory smoke. So I'm gonna just take a plate here and spray these colors on and have some fun. This one's getting empty. So I love the, I love these inks, but I don't like how they spray. So I like to more try and control the um, the water and the way it applies. The spray kind of is a bit harsh. So I have some uh, just water and some crappy little brushes here. So we're gonna start by just saturating the watercolor paper. And this is really just having fun experimenting. You can do this with watercolor, you can do this with inks, you can do this with markers, um, water soluble uh, crayons and um, pencil crayons just use whatever you have in your repertoire here so I am just gonna throw these colors down I like to get all the edges um, of the paper so that when the tape comes off it looks like it's got a nice professional bordered edge so if you, you get a nice rich color along the edges here and it creates this nice little white border Looks a little bit professional. Oh my goodness. That made me jump. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to put some color down. I don't want to do too much. Let's see where this takes me. So as you can see, I put it down quick because I don't want to, I don't want to overthink it. I just want to throw it down and let it do its thing. And it starts creating these really fun, cool edges. You can also use the other side of the brush. I'm just kind of put some scratches and textures in the paper. And I'll show you the end result here of this one. So you can see how I scratched it earlier and it creates these really neat um, effects. So again, just playing with whatever you have. So because I don't have editing software, I am going to put this aside. So this is as much as I put down and then I let it dry and then I move to another one. So for video purposes, we're going to move this aside and bring in one that is dry. Now this one I hadn't scratched yet, but we can do it in the next step. So I'm going to draw some um, chanterelle mushrooms, I think they're called, Ch chanterelle. Some <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'm saying it wrong. Um, chanterelle, I think it is. Uh, I really like the look of them. They're they're really fun mushrooms to draw. So I do have a video on how to draw mushrooms. 
they are the toadstool I think in this in the other video but the same rules apply when you're drawing which is trying to capture some contour lines and uh, which then incorporates the form of the object you're drawing so I'm going to use a graphic pen line marker a 0.3 so it's pretty it's pretty small and I'm just going to sketch so I'm going to do the center of the mushroom here so here's the center right here where the cup goes in and I think chanterelle is a word that's derived from a Greek word which I can't pronounce which means cup is what I read online which I thought was pretty cool so here's the underneath of the mushroom and again I'm just squiggling just having fun trying to capture the form of this mushroom I'm not stressed about it being perfect I don't want it perfect so here is the inside so if you were to drop something in it, it would form in this tube here. And what's really fun about these mushrooms is they have these really beautiful gills underneath. They're very pronounced and they're a lot of fun to draw. So back to the contour. If I were to draw, say, the lines this way or just straight up and down all the way across, it creates a very flat surface. We want to create a little bit of form, so we're going to think and visualize in our head how these mushrooms grow. Now if you have a, um, a reference as in a photograph or an actual mushroom in front of you, you'll capture even more detail and more form by looking at how these uh, mushrooms grow. So as I curve out, my lines will curve out as well. Now I'm putting a little bit more ink on just because I won't have time to to play with ink after because this won't be dry enough by then so I want to put on a significant amount of ink at this point so the same thing out here uh, we want to create an indication of form by how these mushrooms grow so this little guy is curving around this way this one's curving out this way this way just little indications just to kind of give the viewer an idea of how this mushroom looks there's the I don't know if you can hear the beeping the big machines backing up boy I can't wait to have a studio I really miss having a, a space where I can access all my goodies in one spot these days it's a lot of moving around and it's hard to stay creative when you don't have a creative space Kind of have to force yourself a little bit to make do. So here's the rest of the little bottom of the mushroom. I'll just put a little indication texture in there. So that's number one. Uh, let's do a different shape. So maybe we'll do one that's open. Uh, let's do um, what I like to start with whenever I draw a flower or mushroom. I like to start with the center. So I'm going to say this is the opening. So this is where the hole would be down into the tube. So now I'm going to do the part that rolls and frills out towards me. And then I'm going to do the back of the mushroom, which kind of rolls and folds away. So here it's the back of the mushroom and we would have a little indication of it underneath, growing underneath this front flap. And same with over here, just because it's a tube that does this, right? Again, here's the opening. So I'm not going straight up and down, I'm moving it out. It's growing this way. And it's those little tricks of contouring that make all the difference in your sketches. Just a little indication. Of, uh, now uh, normally I would rotate this paper a little easier on my wrist but uh, I don't want to do that just so it's a little easier for you to see but if my lines look wonky it's because I'm fighting my wrist here there we go so same thing the, this doesn't grow this way it doesn't grow straight up and down it grows out And already you can see some form. So 
so now we have to think of where the rest of this flower grows, a flower, this um, mushroom grows. So again, it's a tube, it's a cup. So it would come in like this. And then it has those really beautiful type of uh, gills here. So just indicating that texture. Not overly worried about um, perfection. I don't like perfection. It's too pre too much pressure. <laughs> And then put this guy down here. So we have two perspectives. We have one where we're seeing inside, so we're above the mushroom a little more, and one where we're looking straight onto the mushroom. So that's always fun too. Okay, let's have some more fun. Let's throw some more ink on here. So I'm gonna use a smaller brush and bring my ink back. I'm gonna go into my darker ink and let's pop some more color along here. Now this one's got quite a nice contrast going. So maybe if I put a bit of a darker color behind it in some spots, it will pop it even more. And you never know what you're gonna get with this kind of painting. It's so much fun for that. I'm gonna put a little bit of that dark color underneath here because this is gonna roll over, which creates a little bit of a shadow. Maybe throw that color in here. This one I really like, the way this kind of bright light shows. So I think I'm just gonna add a little bit of that to there, but not much. Maybe pop this edge so when the tape comes off, you can see a nice border. I'm gonna mix these colors here since they're already pretty mixed. And I'm going to tap my brush and splatter. So the splattering effect is kind of fun because while the the paint is wet, it will salt it will soften the splatter, and where it's dry, they'll stay quite harsh. I'm just going to clean up my plate a little bit here. I feel like I'm just getting one solid color. So I'll wipe that off for a second, and let's go back with some browns. got really nice bright center here so I think what I'd like to do is darken behind it a little bit and just make that pop even more I don't want to go perfectly around it and kind of bring this color through it maybe just so it doesn't look so deliberate and then throw this color in the center pop that indicate that space there, that hole. We need a little bit of that green. Mix it. I don't know if I'm off camera there. Really pop the darker corner. We'll let the... We just kind of let it do its thing. It's so much fun. It really is experimental. It's a great way to take pressure off yourself and just have fun and see what you can create using whatever materials you have. Like I said, it doesn't have to be these distressed oxides. It could be anything. Anything you have. Markers, pencils, your kids' crayons, you know, that it could be really cool. You could put like a wax crayon underneath, the white. And of course, wax will repel anything water-based, including, including ink. So you can have these white stripes through it uh, with a, the ink will not penetrate. So a whole other level, I wish I had a crayon right now. That could be fun to play with. So really is just having a lot of fun. You can also use a little bit of paper towel to reabsorb things and create new textures. There's really no wrong or right here. And some of them you're gonna find are your favorites and others you're gonna you're gonna think okay I wish I had played a little bit more and let myself experiment and that's what it's all about just let yourself have some fun and the sketching again do it in pencil if you're a little nervous or you can use a stamp 
you know you can stamp something and and play with this uh there's you don't have to be you know a, a fantastic sketcher of by any means in order to to play with this technique do i do encourage you to draw and have fun and let yourself give it a try a lot of people when they start doing these sorts of things they think oh i have to do it perfect otherwise i don't want to do it at all and uh which is a shame because a lot of things that are experimental uh, yield some really fantastic fun results and um, that's how I learned how to play with paints and things. I'm just going to remove a little bit of the uh, moisture here because I want to do the next step and I don't have a, a dry one to play with. Um, we didn't do any scratching in this. We could still scratch. I do like the scratch effect again. For me, it's about creating textures and interest. It's not just about the focal point, which obviously is the mushroom, but it's the overall effect that it, that the whole thing has. Uh, so this little stamp I found in a thrift shop and I ripped the back off the uh, wood piece because I like bits and pieces of stamps. I don't like the full edges, unless it's something intentional. But in this case, I just want to create more depth and more textures and interest in my image. So what I want to do is add some ink, and this is a slate gray exclusive inks. Um, and I'm just going to ink up, oops, ink up, see, look, who cares, right? I put an ink a line across, doesn't bother me at all, because again, it's just more texture. And I'm just going to throw this in. I'm not even worried about the text being the right way up. It's all about just adding some interest, some fun textures, new elements. I mean, this is a postage stamp, I think, so it really has absolutely nothing to do with mushrooms. So because I have this line here, I want to do another line and see if I can pull it off there. Right? Just, there you go. Experimental. Throw another corner in. Throw a line down here. No wrongs or rights here. All about having fun. So let's do this one this way. And again, you could do it this way. All about textures. Have fun. Have fun with what you've got. Okay, so here, I don't know if it's dry enough. So for me, I look at these and then I think, what else can I do? And for me, I would like a little bit more contrast between what I've drawn and the ink. So you do have to kind of wait till your paper is dry before you start sketching on it again. But I want to I want to actually pull this down here and really make this pop just by adding a little bit darker element there and then maybe something a little more at the bottom other darker paint just to kind of ground it maybe some grass You know, sometimes the, the backgrounds can get pretty busy, which competes with the focal point. So sometimes you have to go back and kind of pull these elements back in and uh, make them pop a little more. There, that, that makes me happy. Same with this one. Just pull a little bit more darker color here. This, this really pretty green, I'm loving that. And I love the splash of white down here, so I don't want to, I don't want to cover that. I really like these lines. See, totally experimental. Now that probably would have upset a lot of people, slipping and dunking some ink on your, on your paper, thinking, oh no, I've ruined it. But you haven't. It's just fun. Okay, now the funnest part is peeling off and revealing the final image. Assuming you are done, you could keep splattering. Now watercolor, depending on the quality that you have, will only absorb so much. It saturates and absorbs the colors and the water and things like that only for so long before it starts to break apart. The higher quality watercolor paper, of course, the longer you can really play with saturating. But in this case, I don't think it's gonna absorb much more. So I'll we'll just reveal our little masterpieces here and see what we accomplished.
And I have really cheap tape, so I have to go kind of slow. And pull away from the image. And there we go. There's our two little cute images we can use for our journals. I'm gonna cut them up. I like to kind of give them a cut and clean them up a bit. And then cut them in half and make pockets out of them or covers. But I mean, you see how fast that comes together. And it really is just, just playing. Just really let yourself have some fun. And again, don't be over intimidated by the drawing. I do encourage you to try it. You know, you're not going to lose anything by trying. Um, but if you find it a little overwhelming or too much to begin with, then use a stamp um, of any subject matter you want and stamp it. And uh, make sure you use an ink that is uh, not water soluble so that it doesn't um, spread and uh, turn all money on you. So there you go. There's some experiments today. Really play with textures. Have some fun and create some little masterpieces. So thank you everyone for joining me today. I'm happy to be back. I hope to try and do another video soon. Um, I uh, really miss being on YouTube, so thank you for watching. If you do like my video, please hit the subscribe button and the like button, and feel free to leave a comment on anything you would like to see. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Bye.